afternoon and welcome to today's video. So what we're actually doing today is we're taking a look at this uh, Sony T7ME, so the SLT7ME, which is a deck that I uh, acquired recently. Now one of the main issues that I've got with this deck um, appears to be power supply related. If I power the deck on, um, only the clock comes on and the deck will not come out of standby. Now, I initially thought that it might be the clock module itself, given that um, the uh, the battery, once obviously fitted to the clock module, can uh, leak and cause a number of problems, as it did on the uh, the C7 that I recently uh, recently repaired. Now, I noted that the timer and clock module on this particular deck was almost identical to the one used on the Sony C5. So what I did was I um, rep actually replaced the whole module with one from the Sony C5. But first off, I did try to repair this one. So I did actually um, dismantle the module completely, uh, remove the uh, the battery itself, and tried to clean the board up. But unfortunately, this uh, this didn't yield any um, sort of kind of uh, any kind of fix. So. The next next thing that I sort of did was I uh, I actually replaced the entire module itself uh, using the one that I found on uh, the C5. Now you can see that the battery has leaked and it has caused a certain amount of damage, lifting sort of partially lifting some of those tracks, but it hadn't leaked as bad as the one on the C7, so it hadn't actually got to those ribbon connectors. So I was able to. Um, certainly sort of partially salvage this board and use it um, on my spare C5 so I've actually reassembled the C5 with this particular board uh, incidentally if you remember that C5 it's the one I'm using for cleaning up um, all of my cassettes that have uh, the mold on them so the battery itself um, is in a slightly different position to the one on the C7 board and required a little bit of wriggling just to uh, just to get it out, but once it was out, um, I was able to uh, sort of clean up the area and, you know, sort of try this board once again. Now, the one thing that I tried to do, and um, to be honest, this was something that I would probably not try to do again, as it was uh, a little bit silly in retrospect. Uh, was I tried actually replacing the entire power supply module with one from the C5. Now, my rational, my rationale or sort of thinking behind this was the machine itself is broadly similar to the C5. It doesn't have any of the C7's trick features, uh, the multi-timer, etc. And um, the power supply that's in this particular machine at the moment is a switch mode power supply um, because obviously it's uh, designed for the Middle East. And the peculiarity about peculiarity about the Middle East is they don't have, or certainly didn't have, any set um, standards. So you effectively had a mixture of standards across the whole of the Middle East, um, sort of power standards, uh, colour standards, etc. So that's why these multi-standard uh, machines exist, so that they can go out to the Middle East, they can play CCAM, PAL and NTSC cassettes, basically sort of the entire Sort of broad spectrum of um, sort of standards, colour standards that you've got. The power supplies in them, in this particular deck at least, is a sort of rather clever switch mode supply. Um, other decks, I've got um, a Panasonic or a National Panasonic deck, uh, which is another multi standard affair, and that has a large rotary selector on the back that you need to select the voltage with. But this particular one has got um, a sort of a more integrated and actually a lot smaller um, switch mode setup. So much smaller transformer and the box that you can see underneath the fuse panel there contains all of the circuitry for that um, switch mode power supply. Now what I tried was I've tried replacing all of this with the power supply from the C5 because you've got the red connector and that white connector up the top there. They also exist on the C5 along with the um, 
other two connectors or three connectors that come off and um, one of them goes to the tuner board well you have, you have the, not tuner board, the timer board, in fact they all go to the timer board um, and supply the machine with uh, with power. Now it partially worked but there is actually an extra connector on the C5 um, that goes into the power board which I guess is for sort of main deck power functionality which wasn't present on this machine so even though I could get the electronic side of the deck uh, working so in other words I could power them take the machine out of standby and I could actually activate some of the deck functions it wouldn't actually activate the deck itself so what I did was I put the uh, the old power supply back in and um, reassembled the old C5 uh, so I could actually use it in the future for cleaning tapes but I put everything back together and uh, decided to take a look at the switch mode power supply that uh, I've got in the T7 now what I noticed when looking online um, on certainly on the, the power site so www.powersite.com which is a very good resource for um, unusual formats, or non-standard formats like VH, sorry, Betamax, Video 2000, Umatic, etc. Uh, is there could be potential problems with the switch mode power supply integrated circuit controller, so the little microcontroller that's uh, on the power supply itself. There could also be a problem with a couple of the power output transistors which um, exist in the uh, the machine, uh, sorry, in the power supply, and um, it's certainly something that I will need to focus on. So what I did, and certainly one thing that I do whenever I'm working on these decks, is I always put everything back. So I effectively reassemble everything uh, and put everything back in its place. So even though I'm going to be dismantling it again the next time I come round to replace these items. Um, I know that uh, because I've got the machine sort of in one piece, um, I know where everything is and I'm not going to lose any screws or anything like that. So to get to these power output transistors and also the uh, the IC, you need to remove um, the switch mode module and uh, you need to actually dismantle that. And there are, I believe, there are four transistors mounted to the black heat sink that you saw earlier. And then there's the switch mode uh, IC, which is also on the board. So the items that you need to replace, uh, there is the power IC, uh, which is a TL494CN chip. Uh, apparently it's also the same as the GL494 and two power transistors they are NEC hyphen C2335 uh, units that's not apparently that's not apparently a very common um, item so if you do a bit of searching online you can actually find that there are some alternatives and I've actually purchased the um, uh, set of the alternative ones the capacitors you've got a 4.7 microfarad 350 volt uh, transistor, bar capacitor, sorry. And you've also got a 0.47 microfarad 16 volt capacitor. Resistor wise, you've got a 3 watt 3.3, um, I think that's kilo ohms, 3.3 kilo ohm affair. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm going to start with replacing the, um, the switch mode, um, the switch mode IC and also those power transistors as the rest of the supply seems to be functioning okay uh, in the fact that it's actually sort of providing power to the clock and does seem to be you know sort of operating to a certain extent I don't really want to dive into it too far and sort of cause any further issues to be honest with you so just showing off the board here um, this is sort of like the level I'll need to get down to I'll probably actually need to separate both those boards one thing I forgot to mention actually was the C5 clock. Now, the C5 clock is identical, but it doesn't actually have an onboard battery. So, there was actually no sort of corrosion or anything on that clock at all, which was good. 
Anyway, that's the end of the video. If you have found this interesting, don't forget to hit that like button. And also consider subscribing for more upcoming fascinating hobbies. Thank you very much for watching.